poor this, and because the end of Calctivus 1 was a while ago by now, we should probably refresh ourselves just in a general sense and state our immediate goal was here. So, our goal for the first half of the semester is to find and to use integrals. So definite and indefinite integrals. And let's sort of briefly <coughs> remind ourselves that the integral from A to B of f of x dx. Well, first of all, in general terms, what is it? Well, geometrically, it's the weighted area. And I'm going to put the word under in quotation marks here. The weighted area under a curve. Under in quotation marks. So we're looking at an interval from A to B. And we've got a function. And maybe this function is sometimes positive, and maybe this function is sometimes negative. Well, the definite integral finds this area. Let's call this area A. Probably been easier to read if I used a different letter for that A. And it finds this area. Let's call this area B, and we add the positive area, and we subtract the negative area. And the idea that we have positive and negative area is what that word weighted is trying to convey. Now, this explanation of an integral, it accurately reflects how this material gets presented in Calc to this one, but it, it's a little abstract. I mean, in the sense that, okay, what's the use of the area under a curve? Um, We've seen one application in Calc to this one, that the area under a velocity curve is the net distance traveled. But an easier way to understand the importance of this, um, of this concept might be the following. Suppose <coughs> you have a rate of 
say you That is to say, there's some quantity you're interested in, but instead of having access to the quantity itself, you have access to the information of how the quantity is changing. And that's actually a very realistic situation. We'll talk about it a lot in differential equations, if any of you wind up in that class. Then the integral from A to B of our rate of change tells you how much the quantity is changing. And I know I'm going fast here. I mean, this is review. Um, we called this the net change theorem because, sorry, my throat's a little sore, because f of b minus f of a is the amount that this function f changes on the interval from a to b. This net change theorem um, accurately represents why the integral is important. The integral is important when you have information about rates of change and you want to know how much the function changes. It can also be used as an evaluation tool as a tool for finding these definite integrals. <coughs> so that's very briefly a review. Maybe not that briefly, no point in going too fast, but let's review. The fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, part two. If you remember from calculus one, the fundamental theorem had two parts. Um, we're only, I think, really going to use one of them in this class. And the fundamental theorem of calculus says, okay, suppose you have an integral and you want to find that integral. I mean, something like the integral from 1 to 2 of x squared dx. This integral is a number. It's giving you the area <coughs> of a region in a plane. And suppose you wanted to know what that number is. Well, what the fundamental theorem of calculus said was that to answer that question, you should try to find a function, capital F of X, such that the derivative of capital F of X equals that integrand, equals lowercase f of X. And if you can find <coughs> 
that function, then the integral from a to b is gotten by plugging in a, plugging in b, and subtracting them. And that was, I think we called it part two of the fundamental theorem, but it's the part we're really going to be interested in this semester. So going back to this, if you recognize, and let's remind ourselves of a bit of notation, this function, capital F of X, is called an antiderivative. And our notation is the integral notation, except that we don't have that A and we don't have that. So if we recognize <coughs> that an antiderivative of x squared is one third x cubed, and when we're using this notation, we write that plus c term, that constant of integration, then this integral can be taken by taking that into um, antiderivative, plugging in one, plugging in <coughs> two. and then subtracting them. And we get, we get whatever that is. Uh, two cubed is eight, so seven <coughs> thirds, if my mental arithmetic is correct. And as I say, that's a goal for this semester. Um, a goal for this semester, for the first half of this semester, is evaluating these definite integrals. <coughs> evaluating definite integrals is tricky, though because finding these antiderivatives is tricky. Like suppose I asked you for the integral from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 of the tangent of x dx. Well, hypothetically, we know how to evaluate the definite integral, right? We just need to find an antiderivative. And then once we found the antiderivative, we plug in this point 0.1, we plug in this point 0.2, we subtract. The problem is, I mean, racking our brains, have we seen any function in calculus one? Have we memorized any function <laughs> whose derivative is the tangent? And the answer to that question is that we haven't. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. The derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. The derivative is the secant is the secant times the tangent. 
Those are the four big derivatives that involve trig functions, and none of them were what we need. So, actually using the fundamental theorem of calculus here is a lot less straightforward than I'm making it sound. To this end, we're going to learn a catalog of integration techniques. So these are Let's call them tricks that let us find some anti derivatives. There are something like five or six standard integration techniques that get taught as part of the standard calculus curriculum. And we have seen one of them. We have seen the trick of U substitution, which, as it happens, is precisely the trick that would let us take the antiderivative of the tangent. But we saw it at the very end of calculus one. It's possible that memories are hazy. So the first thing we really do in this class is a bit of review to get us back into the swing of things. We review U substitution. Let me start this review by making kind of the general observation. It's a discouraging observation, but it's one that needs to be made, that in general, finding antiderivatives is a tricky proposition. Finding antiderivatives is harder than finding derivatives. That's why we need this laundry list of tricks. So U substitution is a technique for evaluating integrals, but it certainly doesn't work for every integral. That is a pipe dream. Um, U substitution is a trick for evaluating very specific integrals. Where we've got composition, and we've also got multiplication by the inside function. So a very specific looking integral. We can't just use it with the nilly. But in spite of its very specific form, U substitution shows up in a lot of very <coughs> important 
very concrete situation. So, like, I've already said this, but U substitution is the technique that we would use for the tangent. And we'll do the tangent later today. But to start with, let's just make sure we're on the same page regarding what I wrote here. So, U-substitution can be used, or at least it can be attempted when we have a composition, and then in addition to the composition, we have some other stuff. A composition, remember, is when we have one function stuck inside of another function. So we have the sine, <coughs> and then inside of that sine function, we have that x squared. U substitution is a tool for dealing with these compositions, but it requires us to have the derivative of the inside function in the integrand as well. So here the inside function is x squared, to use U substitution, we need to have the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Sunny, I mean, I know this is review, but we, it's been a month practically. Um, does anybody have questions so far as we dive into the first integral that we'll take this semester. And the trick of U substitution, if you're using like your textbook or online resources, by the way, U substitution is sometimes just called substitution. But there's a different integration technique called trigonometric substitution. So I like to put that U in there just to make sure that those techniques don't get mixed up. So to that, to do U substitution, we let u be the inside function. In this case, u equals x squared. And then the du is the derivative of u appended with that to dx. So how this then works So the sine of x squared becomes the sine of u. This x squared turns into u. And this 2x 
and this dx turn into du. And now you're attempting to integrate a hopefully simpler function. Um, the derivative and these these are derivatives and antiderivatives that you really need to know kind of in your long-term memory for this course. The derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. The derivative of the negative cosine is the positive sine. And we have, because this is an indefinite integral, notice that there's nothing down here, nothing up here. We have this constant of integration, C. U is what? U is x squared. So the cosine of U is the cosine of x squared. And hence we have found our antiderivative. And if we now had a definite integral, the integral from <coughs> 0 to 0.5 of 2x times the, the sine, was it? 2x times the sine of x squared. Well, now that we've found the indefinite integral. Now that we've found the antiderivative, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's the the negative cosine of <coughs> one fourth plus the cosine of zero. Um, it's been a while since we've done any math. Let me fill in those details. It's minus the negative cosine of zero squared. And this one fourth, this one fourth, that's 0.5 squared. So I wrote 0.5 squared as one fourth, and then this negative sign and that negative sign canceled, which is why I had addition. And zero squared is zero. And we could simplify this further. Um, the cosine of zero is one. Um, in all of the online quizzes, we're just asked for decimal approximations. But there's our first uh, integral of the semester, u substitution. So, why don't we look at a second example, and by we, I mean you. Why don't you take an integral for me? The indefinite integral
of 3x squared times the secant squared of <coughs> x cubed dx. Resume the recording. And then du. If we let u be x cubed, du is 3x squared dx, and that's, that's great. That's exactly what we have. So this turns into the secant squared of u du. But not everybody seemed to remember the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. So the antiderivative of the secant squared is the tangent. And then there's always this final substitution step u is x cubed, so the tangent of u is the tangent of x cubed. Any questions about this example, or really anything that's come before? <coughs> These integration techniques, um, U substitution especially, are extremely delicate. And we're still in the review stage of things, but that's the next thing, the next comment I want to make. Can I erase stuff here? Does everyone have this written down? That's Get rid of all of that. When I call this delicate, what I mean is suppose that instead of 3x squared times this secant squared of x cubed, what if we just had 3x times the secant squared? I mean, it doesn't look like a huge difference. I mean, if anything, this looks like it should be simpler, right? x is a simpler function than x squared. But this change breaks u substitution. And the reason it breaks u substitution is that when I do u substitution, I'm trying to turn that 3x and that dx into du, and I can't do it. To turn that into du, I need an x squared, and I do not have an x squared. I have an x to the first. So that seemingly a kind of minor change means that I cannot take this integral using u substitution. Um, we would have to uh, have to investigate this using other techniques, techniques we haven't learned yet. But even though U substitution is sensitive, let me get 
that back. Its sensitivity is such that if you're just off by a constant, as it were, you can still use u substitution. And let's remind ourselves of what, what we mean by that. Uh, as I say, calculus one was a while ago by now. So say we look at this, and we see that we have composition, we have an outside function, we have an inside function. So we say, okay, let's attempt u substitution. Let's try letting u be that inside function. Well, if u is x cubed, then du is 3x squared dx. And we don't quite have that, do we? We have a 2x squared, not a 3x squared. But we're only off by a constant. And again, what I mean by that, we have the x squared, the x terms fine. It's just that our constant is 2 instead of being 3. And when you have a constant you don't want, or you are missing a constant, or you have the wrong constant, that is not a fatal error. The way we dealt with this was as follows. We said, okay, we we really want a 3, but we don't have a 3. We have a 2. So how can we deal with this? And the answer we came up with is that if we want a 3, we'll just put a 3 in there. But at the same time, we'll put a one-third in there as well. So we're not really changing this integral. Running out of space. Let's just imagine that I have that dx written down. We're not really changing the integral. I mean, that 3 and that 1 third cancel out. But this 2 and this 1 third are constant. And constants can be poured out of integrals. Like so. And now that that constant has been poured out, this 3x squared times the secant squared of x cubed, we can deal with. This is, this is 2 thirds times the integral of the secant squared of u du. Which is 2 thirds of the tangent of u plus c, which is two thirds of the tangent of x squared plus c. And again, this trick, if you want to call it that, only works when we're off by a constant. 
Good question. Isn't it supposed to be uh, executed? Executed. Thank you. So this only works if we're off by a constant. What happens? What if we had just the secant squared of x cubed dx? What if we just had this? And we tried to use the same trick. We let u be x cubed, du, we let be 3x squared dx, and we're missing that 3x squared, but maybe Maybe we decide we're going to try to be clever here. And we say, okay, if we're missing a 3x squared, we'll just put that 3x squared in. And we'll also divide by it. Well, the reason this isn't going to work, I mean, it's true that you could turn this into the secant of u du, but you're stuck with that 1 over 3x squared. You can't pull it out of the integral. So this only works with constants, because constants are the only thing that we can pull out of the integral like that. It doesn't work if you are missing variables, or if you have variables that you don't want. So why don't we do another example where this does work? And again, I say we, but what I really mean is you. Let's say we do not have 2x. Let's say we have the integral of x times x squared plus 1 dx. Let's have you find this indefinite integral using u substitution. In particular, We've got that x squared plus 1 inside of a square root. And we almost have this derivative. We almost have 2x dx, but we don't have a 2. So we're off by a constant. Well, this trick we just reminded ourselves of says that if we're ever missing a constant, we can just put that constant in. But of course, you don't want to change the integral, so you divide by the constant as well. <coughs> this works because constants, in particular the constant that you divide by, you can just pull out <coughs> of integrals. And now we have all that we need. to 
rewrite this in terms of u. Now, of course, doing all of this, I mean, at the end of the day, we still have an integral that we need to take. Um, remember that the square root of u is u to the one-half power. And to integrate powers, we bump that power up by one from one-half to three-halves. And we also divide by that new power. Some stuff happens, some cancellation occurs, and we're left with one third times u, which is x squared plus one to the three halves plus And let me, let's see, I don't always use the full time um, on these Tuesday, Thursday classes, but since I'll probably forget it if I, if I don't do it today, I said that, that integrating the tangent is something you can do with u substitution. So let me quickly do this before we dismiss class. The tangent is not on the face of it a composition. The tangent is the sine divided by the cosine. And this is kind of the other way that u substitution sometimes gets used. It sometimes gets used as a tool for integrating fractions. Although this is a very specialized case. Let me first make the observation. I mean, this is the sine of x times the cosine of x to the negative first. If you recognize that, then this really is just u substitution like we've been doing for the last few problems. We've got composition, we've got this cosine stuck inside a power function. You let u be the inside function. We are off by a constant. We've almost got the sine of x dx. We do not, I mean, we do have the sine of x dx. We're missing that negative sign. Missing negative signs can be dealt with in the same way that missing constants are dealt with. If we put in two negative signs right next to each other, we haven't changed the integral at all. But this gives us negative the cosine of negative first. Sorry. <coughs> This always happens. I'm like, it's the, near the end of class. I should go fast, but that is the opposite of what I should do. It causes me to 
uh, to mess up. So that's any time Zoom whiteboard wants to cooperate. Let's try that again. So we've got this negative sine of x, and we've got this dx, and those are going to turn into du. Then we've got this cosine to the negative first. Well, the cosine is u, so that's u to the negative first. Finally, we have this stray negative sign. And negative signs we can pull out of integrals. And this is an integral you should be able to take. Um, the integral of 1 over u is the natural logarithm. That's just one of those integrals that kind of needs to be in your long-term memory, or at least long, long enough term that you can, you can call it forth for this semester. And it's the natural logarithm of the absolute value, as a matter of fact. So u is the cosine <coughs> of x. And we get this unlovely looking integral. So u substitution, I said it showed up in some major applications. Here's one. And u substitution is how you deal with the tangent, also how you deal with the cotangent, if you ever wanted to integrate that. Uh, tomorrow we'll continue our sort of crash course review, but we might also get to some new material. <coughs> we started talking about the area between curves at the end of class last semester, but we did not finish that topic. So that's what we'll pick up with tomorrow, and I will see you then.